In this video, we'll talk about for each loop. Now, why do we need another loop when we already have this particular loop here? Okay, for that, let's understand, let's comment the entire section from here because I want to use uh, the simple example which we already have here, right? So if you remember, we have worked with this array which has four numbers. So let's work with normal integers. Now, if you want to print all the values, this is what we did, right? We used a normal variable, normal for loop in which you have a counter i which starts from zero to the last value of the length of the array, uh, less than that, which is three. And we, we were able to print all the values. The only thing is why you need to do the counter and then you have, you should also know the length of the array and then you have to specify the index value here to fetch the value. I mean, this works, but then can we have a better solution for this? And that's where we got an amazing loop which only works with array and array type of data. So in, in future, we're going to talk about collection as well in that also it is used. But since we only know arrays at this point, let's try to use another type of loop. Now think about this. Can we just say, hey, for loop, you know what I want you to do? Iterate between all the values and give me one value at a time. And of course, I will decide what to do with that value. Example here as well, we are able to fetch a particular value of an array and then we can do whatever we want to do with that. Of course, at this point, we're just printing it, but we have an option of doing multiple things. Here as well, I would say, hey, for loop, you give me a value, not the index number. Give me the value. So for loop says, okay, okay, let me try. So whatever value a for loop will give you, you can store that in n, a variable, but then from where you will get the value? You will get the value from the nums, which is the array. So I can give a colon and we can say nums. This is the syntax for, for each loop. I know this will be confusing at the start, but once you get used to it, you will love it. What is happening here is, if you compare with the upper loop, in the upper loop, we are using a counter. Here, we are not using a counter. We are simply saying from this nums, I, it doesn't matter how many values you have, four values, 10 values, 50 values, I don't care. You just give me one value at a time. And that one value will go into n. Now you can decide what to do with that. At this point, just to keep it simple, we are printing it, okay? So you can see I just got the value n and I'm printing it. No i, no counter, no increment, no need to check for the length, no exception, right? And uh, this is the beauty about it. Is it will just iterate between the nums and iterate till the last element. So if you have five elements, it will iterate five times. If you have four elements, it will iterate four times. And every time it will give the value to n and that's what you are printing it here. Let me prove that. Let me just compile this code and run. You can see we got the values. This is better, right? Uh, you can also use this with the thing here, which we have done for student. I will just comment this part and uncomment the entire section from here. Everything is uncommented. The only thing is I don't want to use the normal for loop. I want to use the enhanced for loop. So normally, instead of saying that this is a for each loop, we say enhanced for loop. Okay, so what we can do is we can say for, and here, okay, the only thing is, with normal for loop, we use int because we want to maintain the counter. If we talk about the example which we have done for normal integers, here also we, use, we are using int because the type of values in nums is int but now we are working with students, right? So here, when you say student, let's say stud colon. So we have to mention the student type, not int, because from the students array, you are getting a student reference and you will get the values from students. So it doesn't matter how many students you have, it will fetch one student at a time. And then with that student, you can print the same thing. So whatever you're printing here, you can print that here. The only thing is, this stood represent one particular student at a time. So you can simply say student stood.num and you can just concatenate. So what we are doing here is we are doing concatenation. The student name, and then we are giving a colon. So to do that, we have to use a plus operator in between to concatenate. And I can also say stood dot, let's say marks. Let's see if this works. Now we are working with student, not with normal variables. Compile and run, that's it you got the output. So you got Naveen and you got number. 
So this is your enhanced for loop. Yeah, some people do say it's a for each loop, but let's call it as enhanced for loop because in the upcoming, in the latest version of Java, not the latest one, I'm talking about Java 8, which came way back, uh, it has a for each method. So just to not get confused, let's call this as a enhanced for loop. Now, one of the reasons why people say it's a for each loop is because in other languages, this type of loops are called for each. And that's why in Java also people have a tendency to call it for each, but let's call it enhanced for loop. So I hope you got the idea and I would like you to work on this, practice this, otherwise it will be confusing. So practice this multiple times and you will get used to it. Thank you so much.